1997. Kenneth Regan, originally named Kenneth Avery and born in 1953, was a heroin smuggler. Living the high life, he wore tailor-made clothes, drove a Mercedes sports car and gave friends expensive Cartier watches. He earned the nickname Captain Cash. 1998. Regan was arrested as part of a major police drug offensive called Operation Bromley. He was caught with 30 kilograms of top-grade heroin and wads of cash in the boot of his car. He was also charged with grievous bodily harm against a policewoman who he ran over with his car when trying to escape. He was jailed for 20 years. However, he turned supergrass, giving police many details about fellow drug smugglers. As a consequence of his cooperation, his sentence was reduced to eight years. He served only four years, being released from prison in 2002. July 2002. Once out of prison, he had to hide away as there were various gangland contracts out on his life. He changed his name, going from Avery to Regan. Regan was reduced to living with his elderly father in a bungalow in Wilton in Wiltshire and driving around in a second-hand Peugeot 206. He missed the high life and hatched a plan to steal the business. January 2003. Reagan tried to organise a three million pound deal involving land near Heathrow Airport, which Amajit Chohan had an option to buy. Claiming he had Dutch backers who wanted to buy the firm, Reagan became a regular visitor at the Heathrow offices. When this failed, Reagan began to target Mr Chohan's haulage company, Seba Freight, which was near London's Heathrow Airport. Amajit Chohan was also a multi-millionaire and made his money in drug dealing as well and also had served time in prison. 13th of February 2003. Mr Johan was invited to a business meeting near Stonehenge and told his workforce, I'm off to do a deal. He was never seen alive again. He was abducted by Kenneth Regan, William Hornsey and Peter Rees and taken back to Regan's father's home in Forge Close, Wilton near Salisbury where he was bound and tortured. The businessman was gagged, forced to record voice messages for his family and to sign a letter handing over his entire business to Kenneth Regan. Regan had planned to make people think Mr Chowan had given up his freight business and gone abroad voluntarily with his family. Unknown to Regan at the time, Mr Chowan had managed to write a note dated the 12th of February. The note written to Regan was only found after the body of Amajit Chohan was found. This proved to be a piece of incriminating evidence against Regan at his subsequent trial. 15th of February 2003. With Peter Rees guarding Mr Chohan in Salisbury, Regan and Hauntsey travelled to London and talked their way into Mr Chohan's family home in Hounslow. They killed his 25-year-old wife Nancy, as well as killing their young children, Ravinda, aged 18 months, and eight-week-old Davinda. They also killed Nancy's mother, 51-year-old Chanajit Carr. They then hired a van and removed all the bodies to the West Country. 17th of February 2003. Regan arrived at Mr Chohan's company, Seba Freight, with a handwritten note from Mr Chohan and a power of attorney for the running of the company. The employees became very suspicious. 19th of February 2003. A close friend of Reagan's was Belinda Bruin. Belinda, aged 43, was an ex-PR executive and former best friend of Paula Yates, the late wife of Bob Geldof. Reagan was besotted with Belinda and wanted the glamorous divorcee to be the front of the takeover of Seba Freight. Coincidentally, she had 50 acres of land at Great Colford House near Tiverton in Devon. A perfect place to bury a body. She was unwittingly manipulated into helping out. Unknown to her, Regan used her 50-acre estate to secretly bury the five bodies of the Chohan family. March 2003. Pressure from the Chohan family members about the family's disappearance mounted and the case was referred to Scotland Yard's serious crime squad. 
19th of April 2003, Easter Saturday, Reagan goes into a state of panic by the progress of the police investigation. Fearing they will soon learn of the farm in Devon, he refer, returns with Hornsey and Reese and digs up the five bodies. Miss Bruin became suspicious. She arrived back at the farm in Devon and found Regan, Hornsey and Reese working on a drainage ditch in her field. 20th of April 2003. The three men buy a boat and dump all the bodies in the English Channel. Nine days later, the 29th of April 2003, Mr Chowan's body was found floating in the sea near Bournemouth Pier. When his body was found, it was obvious he'd been restrained. He'd been gagged with packing tape. Also, a urine sample showed an unusually high level of a drug more commonly known as GHB, which can be used as a sedative and known colloquially as the date rape drug. That night, Scotland Yard detectives arrived in Devon to interview Belinda Bruin. Reagan and Hornsey realised the net was closing in on them and decided to flee by ferry to France. They then travelled to Spain. Peter Reese also went on the run, hiding out with a friend in Gloucestershire. 14th of May 2003, Peter Reese is arrested in a pub in Colford in the Forest of Dean. 15th of July 2003, Nancy Chohan's body was recovered in the same area as her husband, near Bournemouth Pier. 2nd of August 2003, Reagan had been on the run, but police caught up with him. They traced him from Spain and eventually arrested him on a campsite in Belgium. 7th of September 2003, the body of Amarjit Chohan's mother-in-law, 51-year-old, Chamajit Carr was found floating in a bay off the Isle of Wight. The bodies of the two boys have never been found. September 2003, Hornsey gives himself up to police in Dover. 8th of November 2004, all three men go on trial for murder and kidnapping. Friday the 1st of July 2005, Reagan and Hauntsey are convicted of five murders. Reese is convicted of Mr Chohan's murder and of assisting an offender, but cleared of the other four murders. Tuesday the 5th of July 2005. Sentencing the three men to life imprisonment, the judge, Sir Stephen Mitchell, told Reagan and Hauntsey they should never be released and that Reese will have to serve at least 23 years in prison. The murder investigation, thought to be the longest involving the Metropolitan Police at the time, cost more than £10 million. Reagan and Hauntsey are now on the Home Office list of whole life tariff prisoners, never be released and never to be considered for parole. 30th of June 2016. According to a new police inquiry, both Kenneth Regan and William Hauntsey are believed to have been, quote, directly involved in the disappearance of a Mr Michael Shalimak. Mr Shalimak, aged 53, from Southampton, went missing in April 1992. Police investigations are ongoing. Thank you for listening and please subscribe for more videos like this.